So now that we've talked also about the structure of a document, you're more or less ready to go, but you might ask yourself a question, okay, um, people did this before, is there maybe like a good example or a template that I could use to get a little bit of a better feeling of how such a document should look like? And since requirement engineering is not really a new discipline, the good news is that there are actually document templates available that you can use to build on top of so that you do not have to reinvent the wheel. And those standardized document structures come with a lot of uh, advantages uh, because they essentially give you some kind of scaffolding to hold yourself to and, and help to design the structure and the, the, the content. Um, but they also help to make sure that the skilled reader who is used to read those standardized documents according to standard A or B or C, they already know intuitively like where are all the relevant information that I'm looking to forward to. Um, so standards helping you to create those documents, but also help the reader who knows what the standard structure like to find information as quick and as fast as possible, which might not be the case if every requirements engineer just creates their own document structure that roughly follows those things we discussed in the previous video, um, but maybe um, like slump, some, some minor deviations here and there. So those standard uh, outlines predefined, uh, predefined structures. Um, they simplify the incorporation of new staff members if they know the standard. They help you to create the desired, uh, to create and find the desired content really quickly. Um, they make sure that selective reading is possible. If I know what I'm looking for, I don't have to read the whole 100 page document. I can go straight to page 50 and get what I need. Um, they also have support for automated ver verification of the document. For example, with respect to their requ uh, completeness, is every required section present or not? And you can, if you're like staying long enough in that business, also reuse contents of other requirements documents. Um, but even if you have the structure um, that can be nicely used to get like the rough outlines, you still have to tailor it to your project properties. They are just like the rough structures that you can use. And there are various document templates and guidelines. We will have a quick look at the IEEE 830, the V model and the Volare templates. Um, but we'll just go over them because talking about each of those templates and guidelines and details could be a whole lecture in itself. What we once again want to do is give you some pointers, some directions where you will find more information and give you a rough understanding, okay, what's the V model, what's the layer template, like just giving an idea to get you started. And then when you really want to use it in reality, you have to go to the corresponding literature and dive deeper into that topic. So let's first start with the IEEE standard E30 from 1998. Uh, it's a recommended practice for software requirements specification developed by the IEEE. And it gives you a template that might be used to specify the developer uh, requirements. In addition to the template, it provides the characteristics for good software requirements specification documents. So the structure suggested by the IEEE standard 830 uh, suggests dividing your document into three main chapters. The first contains introductory information like the system goals, the system boundaries, while the second chapter then goes into more details with respect to the general description of the software, like the perspectives of the system, future users, constraints, the constraints and so on. The last chapter then contains the specific requirements like functional and non-functional requirements. We will provide you some more additional detailed information on the actual content of those chapters as self-study content below this video. Next is the V model, which defines different structures depending on the creator of the document. So in Germany, we have the standard 699904, which defines the structure and terminology of the Lastenheft and Pflichtenheft that we just talked about a few minutes ago. So the customer requirement specification or the last and half describes the demands on the contractors or like you as a user, what do you want? What are the deliverables? What are the services? That often includes demands of users. So we already discussed that 
a few minutes back. It includes constraints on the systems and the development. And then, on the other hand, the Pflichten have the system requirement specification is based on the customer requirements uh, that define like what would we deliver you if we uh, work on based on the last heft. The V model XT is a variation of the original V model where XT stands for extreme tailoring. So we tailor the original V model to specific needs, thereby avoiding unnecessary work by defin defining the lesion conditions for like smaller and medium sized projects. The original V model had like big, complex, large projects in mind, while some stuff might just not be applicable if you're thinking about smaller and medium sized projects. So whatever you don't need, you just throw out. It also allows for greater modularization. So you need those modules that you need for your project and leave everything else. And it also has a stronger orientation towards agile and more incremental approaches. We have linked you a resource here down below um, where you can find more information. So why is the V model, either the XT or the original model called V model in the first place? Um, I think the figure in the background makes it quite clear here where this V form or V shape came from. Um, you start on the left side of the figure with the concept phase where you have the requirements. Then moving through the system analysis, the software design, the modular design, and then uh, the bottom you have the implementation when you then start moving upward to unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and then acceptance testing. And for each of those steps on the way down to the implementation, you have a matching counterpart for verification and validation purposes. And this is where the V shape and the V name comes from. And last but not least, as a third option, we have the so-called Volare template, which was developed by James and Susan Robertson from the Atlantic System Guild. And they have a template that may be used to specify user requirements as well as developer requirements. Some of those template sections uh, describe very detailed information about the system, while other sections are more high level. So you always have this developer versus user perspective. So some template sections are for the developer audience, others for the user audience. And in these cases, either the user notations is a key differentiator or the information contained in the user document is refined uh, in the developer section. So, so like always like these two different approaches or perspectives here. I will also include you the link in the uh, supplementary information below so you can have a closer look at this and we'll also provide some more information there on the actual document structure that you can study yourself. So what is the takeaway of the first lecture on requirements documentation? So we wanted to give you an overview of the different types of documentation that exists, natural language, conceptual model, and hybrid approaches. We also briefly touched again on the different perspectives, the data, the function, and behavioral perspective, and what type of documentation they support or um, foster. Then we also thought and talked about document structures. How do you structure your documentation document? Uh, what is important? What is not important? Um, what kind of standardized structures exist? So we briefly touched on the IEEE standard 830. We touched on the V model and is a specific version, the XT model. And then we also spent a few uh, slides looking at the Volare template. Those standards provide means to structure your requirements documents. Um, some of them are more flexible than others, and they indicate what should be the content of a requirement specification so that you as a requirements engineer have some guidance, but also people who are familiar with those standards know exactly what to look at and what to find in which section. What the standards do not is indicate how to specify different parts. This is not part of the standard. They also do not indicate how to guarantee the characteristics of a good document. They do not support the notation to specify a certain section. And they do not support you in how to achieve, for example, like completeness or traceability. They are just structured guides. And 
also quality of the documentation is important because why are you documenting this in the first place? Because otherwise uh, all this information that you previously elicited might get lost. There might be com communication problems. Uh, we talked about the relevance of why you should care about proper documentation in the beginning of this video.